Hey everybody, um, I just uh, wanted to get together with everyone and I thought it might be a good idea if I started doing a video blog or something and um, in regards to some of the books that I've read and I wasn't sure how exactly to do this. I was going to use like my computer webcam or something like that but I couldn't figure out how to make the stupid thing work and it's like download all this extra crap and I was like well I'm not gonna bother with that I'm just gonna use my iPhone but um so I want to do some uh, video uh, some book reviews and one of the ones that I've that I finished reading a while ago but it's still fresh in my mind but uh, one of the things that one of the books that I wanted to talk to you guys about was one that I heard about through a guy named Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you guys have heard of him before. Some of you guys probably have. Um, but he was uh, mentioning this book by a fellow named Alexander Solzhenitsyn. He's a, well, he was a Russian, a Russian uh, author and he was born in 1918 or something like that so right at the beginning of the revolution but he served during world war ii fighting against the germans and somewhere along the lines um he sent some sent a letter or something to somebody and uh it was read by by the uh, by the authorities and he for, apparently had uh, something negative to say about Joseph Stalin so they basically threw him in prison for eight years and actually as far as the prison terms went back then uh, eight years was actually pretty low especially for saying something about the great leader uh, Joseph Stalin so uh, but the name of this book is called the Gulag Archipelago uh, this is the abridged version uh, if any of you guys uh, that that means that it's uh, a bit shortened up there's a couple of chapters in this book that are um, that are just you know briefly summarized because they weren't that, as important to the overall story but I gotta tell you this book right here was uh was pretty damn horrifying i gotta tell you because you know it's different when you say wow this stuff really happened and the way that it's detailed is is f like m completely mind-numbing and mind-blowing i couldn't believe some of the stuff i was reading and i would tell lauren about some of the stuff as i was reading it like i'd sit back in my chair and go holy shit like oh my god that was so horrible it was like horrible worse than like almost any other book that i've ever read now I, don't get me wrong i don't like this kind of stuff but i do like to learn and i like to learn about things that are uncomfortable you know uncomfortable truths you know, and if uh, if people continue to forget about the things that happened in the past, you know, they say you're doomed to repeat it. But this book really hits a lot of stuff on the head. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, they have favorable views of communism and whatnot. But uh, this book will uh, will spell it out for you pretty clearly that it ain't all that it's cracked up to be. Um I got a cat. Cat just came to visit me. Um, yeah, so. Uh, hey, kitty. What you doing? What you doing? So, where was I? I kind of lost my spot. Oh, yeah. So, how it begins is, he says, uh, you know, it all begins somewhere, you know. And the very first step is, you get arrested and you're like why am i being arrested and some people were getting arrested for no reason you know uh i'll be right back okay uh, i take that back 
not some people were getting arrested for no reason. A lot of people were being arrested for no reason. Um, you know, the, the authorities, uh, you know, they got their orders from the top. You know, and the top says, hey, in your province, we need 300 or however many people from your province this month. Get me 300 people. And, you know, and it's basically like, you know, you have all the, the, the secret police and all that stuff. Um, you know, they all have their quotas that they need to meet. So, you know, if you stole, say, a, a, a fistful of grain, you know, because you were starving to death, even as a child, even if you were like a 12 or 13 year old child, they would put you, they would send you to the gulags. They would send you to the prison to the frozen prison death camps in the tundra, you know, and, um, you know, even if you didn't do anything, like say, let's say somebody was jealous of you, you know, they're like, that should be my man or whatever. Um, they could say something about your wife and your wife would literally disappear. And basically once that happened, you had no choice but to basically forget about them because they there was a very solid chance that they were never going to come back you know um you know because of uh you know famine or because uh you know from starving to death or from uh freezing to death out there being sick being shot murdered whatever the case may be but so they 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 would uh drag these people in into these uh into these police precincts and they would say uh they would they would write up a a a a, a statement now whether it's true or not mm, a lot of the times it wasn't true you know they would be like hmm it says here that you have stolen something from the from the people in charge, blah, blah, blah. Or they would be, <laughs> sounded French there, but they'd be like, or that you have said something negatively about the great leader or something. And, uh, and the people would be like, no, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. And they're like, yes, you did. And they're like, no, I didn't. And because these police, the, these secret police and stuff, they had quotas to make. They basically took it as why the fuck are you st standing in my way? Why are you making thing? Why are you making my life difficult? You know, and so they would resort to uh, to torture. They would, uh, you know, they would beat you. Uh, they would throw you into solitary confinement uh, in the cold. They wouldn't feed you. Uh, and then while you were there and while you were being interrogated, if you did happen to crack, then they would force the person who they were interrogating to give up the names of more people. And while, when, when, you know, somebody's, you know, got their, got their foot, you know, stomping down on your, on your crotch, some names are going to start flying out of your mouth, whether they did something or not. So basically, the entire Russian culture became like where nobody trusted each other and nobody talked to each other. And, you know, and it just became this big grinding cycle. Uh, so, um, you know, there was that. There was a famine that was going on at the time, too, because even outside of the prison outside of the prison system there really wasn't enough to eat um, I, I might add one thing before I keep on going that uh, you know I've read the book 1984 by George Orwell and uh, even though he did a he did a really good job at like kind of like predicting the way that things were becoming or the way that he foresaw it uh, being in the future, and he had some insight on that. Um, this book, uh, f to me, was a lot scarier, not only because of the way that it was written, but also because this is actually, this is true, too. 
this is true and this is stuff that has actually happened it's not just the spy a spy state you know this this was stuff that actually happened and i would say that the reason why george orwell predicted so much of this stuff was probably because the human psyche or the hum the way that human beings are doesn't change a whole lot technologies change but the way that humans treat one another is uh is pretty much a constant thing you know humans are bad to each other humans are very bad and you know even even uh y you know the the legislation that that is uh is put into place by the people the higher ups and, and the authorities uh it, it always seems like the legislation is never as bad as what the people enforcing it actually do you know i mean they might say you know in their legislation well you're not allowed to torture and you're not allowed to shoot people and you're not allowed to kill people you're not allowed to uh you know uh sentence the innocent and all that stuff and the people who have quotas to meet and kids of their own to feed they don't have time for people to tell